Hello everybody, happy Sunday. Today I'm gonna give you a quick overview on the Kubota L6060. Now I know in my last video um, on the 4066R, I gave you a good overview on that tractor and what makes it a snow tractor, etc., and all the beautiful features John Deere has to offer. But while I'm showing you the direct competitor here and you're looking at it, the Kubota L6060 with the Norman 82 inch hybrid blower on the back, I'm gonna to touch on the advantages of the Kubota and the disadvantages of the Kubota compared to the John Deere 4066R. So I'm gonna start off with the road speed. Number one, the road speed on the Kubota L6060 is uh, topped out at 24 to 25 kilometers an hour as opposed to the John Deere 4066R that tops out at about 30 to 33 kilometers an hour. So there's a huge advantage from the 4066R right there, especially if you have um, a route that needs a little bit more driving time um, and is not as dense, you're gonna want that 4R on that route as opposed to um, having a very tight road. If you have a very tight road, both machines are gonna work for you, but you want the Kubota L6060 on the tighter route because of course it doesn't go as fast. Um, that's uh, the one advantage to disadvantage there is the cab, okay? The cab in the Kubota L6060 is much larger, spacious, uh, the controls are absolutely beautiful inside the Kubota L6060. Very simple, not too complicating. Okay, um, the side windows are an amazing feature. Now, the only disadvantage to the cab in the L6060, in my opinion, would have to be the, the wishbone foot pedal. Okay, so you got your forward and reverse because it's hydraulic driven, no clutch. Um, and... On the 4R, it has its own separate pedal for forward and backwards, or forward and reverse, I should say. And I think that's a lot better of a system as opposed to having forward and reverse on one pedal. Okay, it's a little bit iffy. I mean, I ran this tractor for two years um, prior to this year, um, and I absolutely love this machine, no complaints. But I could definitely argue that the 4R pedal system is a lot cleaner and better, okay? Now, that's pretty much it when you're comparing both machines. I would say the 4066R has a beefier uh, rear end too. I think it has a stronger built rear end than the Kubota L6060. That's one more thing I could say. Um, of course, the Kubotas aren't as painted up. Like they don't have as much paint on them as the 4Rs. So the rear ends are painted in like a, a like a gunmetal gray or a darker like gray, if you will, um, as well as like near the engine block and stuff. Whereas the 4Rs are green through and through, like they're painted green head to toe from the rear to the, the engine block to the transmission case, everything in between. So that's one thing I could complain about. Um, I wish that these Kubotas had a little bit more of their um, signature color, which is the orange, right? Like even on the weight case too, on uh, the front axles and, and everything in between. It could definitely use some more orange in my opinion. Now I'm going to touch base on what makes this a snow tractor, okay? You got your Nokian tires, of course. You got your extended rear fender flares. Um, these are actually not available from Kubota okay you need to get these custom made um you could maybe get them out of Montreal or Quebec they were so hard for me to find so I actually had to get a custom fabricator in Sault Ste. Marie to build uh, me these fiberglass uh, extended fender flares on the rear and they're absolutely amazing no overspray on the cab if you don't have the right fenders on you're gonna get overspray all over that cab on a hotter day when you're driving around and you can't see nothing. You're always gonna have to wash the machine and it's just very, very annoying. Now, of course, you got your rookie rods on the back of the blower, that's essential. Um, you got your toolbox right up here. You got your mirrors, your beacon, all your lights. You got your front fender flares. You got your weight case. And then another nice little feature that we add on so you don't lose any gas caps is we have the gas cap holder. I love this great feature that we add on to all of our machines. It's all about those 1%, you know, you don't want to lose gas caps and your operators are going to, so you might as well prevent it. Put a gas cap holder on. I extremely, 
recommend. Okay, now of course you got your entry in the rear. I took down my last video of the 4R. You get through in there to get into the impeller if you gotta unclog the chute. You got, um, of course, uh, your shear pin entry there if you gotta change the shear pins, your tool if you need to move the drivetrain. Uh, PTO's there with the PTO cover. You got your shovel, custom shovel. Uh, we mounted this on ourselves. We just uh, welded a little uh, piece of steel there with holes in it. Attached some clips with a clip holder so we don't lose the clips either. Like I said, all about those 1%. You have your hydraulic accumulator. That's another very, very important feature when running any sort of snow tractor that's of this size, okay? Now, when you have a larger machine, you won't need a hydraulic accumulator because they could handle uh, weight on the, on the rear end. But these machines, um, like the 4Rs and the Kubota L6060s, you absolutely need an accumulator or else you will snap the rear end um, and, and that's no good for business, right? You'll see, you'll be driving down the road and your blower will be uh, on the ground and it's just a mess. Been there, done that. Now, I didn't get to pop open the hood on my last video of the 4R, so I might as well do it for you with the Kubota here. Beautiful engines on these machines, so compact. So you could tell we take really, really good care of our equipment here at Northern. This machine here is four years old. It's got a thousand hours on it. And it's cleaner than a whistle. Really good that you guys are always undercoating um, your tractors yearly. We undercoat them every spring. That way they don't get rusty and they stay really clean. With all that salt and sand on the road, it's going to eat these machines alive. So always make sure you're undercoating them. That's a little tip that I could give to everyone. So before I hop in the cab here and give you a little bit of a rundown, I want to show you that I have another Kubota L6060 with a Pronovo Cyclone on the back. Now, we run all Norman hybrid snowblowers in our fleet, but we do have two Pronovo Cyclone. I purchased them brand new two years ago, so we still have them in the fleet because they're amazing blowers. Um, but I basically switched out my whole fleet to strictly all Norman hybrids as... They are such a good price point. They're such a well-built, designed blower, and uh, they just can't be beat. Like, for the price point especially, like, not only are they fair-priced, just the overall design and aspect of the Norman Hybrid, it just, it can't be beat. Like, Pronovo Cyclone, amazing blower, but I'm sorry, Norman's got you beat, 100%. You just can't beat a Norman Hybrid, and um, I know Metal Plus purchased Norman Hybrid and bought them out about two years ago and I could tell that they've been making little improvements every year to make this blower absolutely polished and they've been doing a good job. This is a 2019 model here. Some of my 2022 models over there are uh, got a little bit of extra features. Um, the little, little, little minor details that make it um, a, a just a beautiful blower that just can't be beat in my opinion. So that's that. I'm gonna hop in the cab here, give you a rundown. So you got your brake, of course. You got your three ranges. You got basically low up here, medium and high. You got your four wheel drive here. You got your diff lock there. You got your seat control there. You got your valve for the three point hitch to adjust how fast your blower goes up and down. Okay. I want to hop in the cab here. So wheel knob. I mean, that's uh, operator preference. You got your cruise control. CB radio mandatory for all communications out during operations. Like I said in my last video, you got your hazards, you got your auto throttle, you got your different display settings. Um, this is for when your tractor does a regen. So you can leave that as is uh, until the regen sign comes on. You got your beautiful mirror up here. Of course, radio absolutely mandatory. You want your operators listening to tunes and enjoying themselves. We got our custom RAM mount set up here. For your iPhone, for your tablet, when you're out doing operations, chargers and all, boom, you just hook it up, hook it up, and you go. Um, of course, you got your heat, window defroster, et cetera, et cetera. Got your speakers up here. You got your lamps for the front, lamps for the rear. Your nice side windows I was talking to you about when you want a little bit of air. 
or if you're smoking a cigarette or something like that, when you're out during operations and you get a little bit hot in your cab and you want a nice cold breeze, open this window and it's it's awesome. It just gives you the right amount of fresh air. Sadly, the 4Rs don't have this option, which I think they should, but they don't, as well as they don't have the cab room and the simplicity as this machine does. Now look how simple this cluster is, okay? Ignore the loader stick because we don't use it. You got your throttle right here. You got your PTO on right here. You got your three point hitch up and down. And then you got your blower side to side and your shoot up and down. Like it does not get more simple than that. That cannot be beat. Compared to the 4R, it's much more simple, much more elegant. And I believe that John Deere should make a switch to uh, changing all their machines to have a setup like these beautiful Kubotas do. I don't know what Japan's doing, but they're doing something right because this setup is absolutely killer for the business that we're in in particular too. Like this cluster is amazing. It's very, very simple, very elegant. And like I said, um, it can't be beat for, for the small tractors. So, um, and that's about it. Like, like I said, when I, when I told you this machine's very simple, I was not lying to you. There's not a whole lot to show you. Like that's it all in a nutshell. So you're very, you're, Rookie operators, your be beginner operators, I would put them in a Kubota L6060 if you had them, and then I'd put them up into a 4R. Now, if you own all 4Rs, that's awesome. If you own all Kubota L6060s, that's awesome. They have their advantages, and they have their disadvantages. However, if I were to take one over the other, I would probably take the Kubota, but I would take the 4R if I had a, a longer route where I needed to get to uh, houses that were farther apart from one another, I would choose the 4R. If I had a nice tight route, I would choose the Kubota L6060 as I think it's a, a much larger cab, more spacious. Uh, the controls are very simple, like I was telling you. And it's just an all around, just nicer machine, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to just being comfortable, okay? Now, of course, you got your rear window that you could open up here. You got your blow in the back. Now I'm actually going to start the machine, which I didn't get to do in my last video. Now, like I said, this Kubota has a thousand hours on it, close to 913. There is nothing that I could say bad about this machine. It has been so loyal, so reliable, and I, I absolutely love these Kubotas. Sadly, I'm going to be getting rid of all my Kubotas and running only four hours. The differences from disadvantages and, and advantages are very minor between the both. However, I just want um, a clean looking fleet of all green. So I will be getting rid of these Kubotas uh, next year. If anybody's interested, let me know as they will be for sale. Um, but honestly, I can't say anything bad about these machines. I absolutely love them. And uh, I definitely think uh, the John Deere should take a couple things from these Kubota L6060s and, and put them in their next generation of 4Rs because um, the Kubota's got some advantages for sure. Okay, I'm going to give her a little rev here, give her a little juice. Turn that blower on for you. PTO off, you got your control for the blowers like I was telling you, your three point hitch for your blower going up and down, very responsive in the Kubota, very smooth. Like I said, this cluster cannot be beat. That's how you want it, more simple, the better. And that's the overview on the Kubota L6060 guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please give me a message as I'm always happy to talk. Stefano Narducci, owner of Northern Snow, and I'm out.